he had the goal of showing that patriarchy is not a permanent feature of, you know, human society and how, you know, people say it's somehow rooted in our biology, you know, women are just naturally weaker or our nature. But what Engels was saying, it was actually, um, it had everything to do with the development of class society, um, bringing the analysis of oppression and linking it to class society. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that and like why this was so um, groundbreaking for its time and still relevant today? You're for fast forwarding in terms of, of Engels' own development and his writing to 1884, when he turns his attention to this question and writes a book about women's oppression and its origins. And I think it's actually important to highlight the context of this, because in 1884, you do have a workers' movement that has already developed rapidly, is organizing a huge amount, millions of workers in trade unions and politically organizing uh, workers as well. And women are increasingly being drawn into the workforce. And what you see in the workers' movement is the conservative side being against women being drawn into the workers' movement. Um, and the revolutionary side of the workers' movement actually arguing in favor of organizing women. And Engels, in this debate, sees his contribution as giving that a scientific, theoretical basis, the need to organize women workers together with all of the, the workers in the workers' movement. So he writes this book in which he traces back where does actually women, women's oppression come from? Was it just invented by capitalism? No, it wasn't. It, patriarchy predates capitalism and but he pinpoints that it actually develops together with the development of private property with the idea of of hunter-gatherer societies no longer um, or starting to settle agrarian societies developing and therefore the uh, private property becoming an issue and the need to pass on that private property to the next generation an increase in the the, the sexual division of labor pushes women increasingly into an di economic disadvantage and how that economic disadvantage then expresses itself in a multitude of other, other ways over the thousands of years that follow. So it's not just economic anymore. It's also social, it's cultural, it's, um, so, you know, women in, in, in culture for most of history haven't really had any representation and men painting us. <laughs> um, psychological, sexual, he really explains the depth of, of, of how that expression expresses itself for women today. And that's an incredibly powerful description by itself. But I think two really key things that come out of it for me, right, are one, women's oppression didn't always exist. Therefore, it doesn't have to always exist. It's something that is imposed by us by the economic development that happened in the last instance by how the means of productions, production were privatized. So if we want to change it, we need to also change how the economy is organized today, how capitalism is organized today. And in order to do that, women have common cause with other people who also suffer under capitalism. So it points to a united struggle of oppressed people women, LGBTQ people, and so on, with exploited people, with the working class as a whole, and a united movement that is capable of taking capitalism as a system on and fighting for, for the socialization of the means of production, of the wealth that is there in society to be used for the good of all. And that that material basis will provide us then with a basis to challenge all exploitation and all prejudices. I think this is one of the main things that personally pushed me towards socialism. Like this book, the, the origins of the family, uh, the origins of the family, the state, and private property, is one of the the books that kind of like you know make it make sense in a way. Because I think today, a lot of the times in the movements, especially when we intervene in movements for you know like the black lives matter movement movements against racism against sexism um against homophobia a lot of the times we get that question of what does it have to be what does it have to do with socialism what does it have to do with capitalism and i think this book really analyzes it in a really really interesting and scientific way as well obviously it was written almost 200 years ago so there are 
some details that may be a little bit old fashioned about it. There's some things that have been, you know, that they have changed a lot. But essentially, the and the analysis in there is so relevant to today. And I think that connects with because we did see in the last decade a huge rise in feminist like in the feminist movement. And we've seen loads of different movements that have arise. Like we talked about a little bit about like the abortion rights movement um, around the globe, uh, the Me Too movement, the slut walks, all of these like movements that really show the kind of you know anger of women about the position of being still oppressed in society and society that kind of prides itself on being so progressive and so like modern and. Of course, when Engels wrote this, the society was very different. The position of women in society was very different and much worse than it is now uh, in most ways. But how do you think the ideas that we've written in this book are still relevant? First of all, for the movements that we have today, but also for the analysis and the kind of like the way to fight back against oppression. I think one of the key things that comes out of the book when he talks about capitalism specifically and how that, how oppression of women expresses itself under capitalism is that he points so clearly to the contradiction that is at the heart of how capitalism uses women's oppression. So he describes on the one hand that for the first time since the start of private property thousands of years ago, capitalism as a system actually pushes women not into the home, but out of the home. It needs women as a labor force and therefore women are, you know, become workers uh, and therefore also go through the same process that workers as a whole went through of actually realizing we can get organized here, you know, we can fight back. Um, So he actually sees the idea of women being pushed out of the home in some way as a progressive point, right? He obviously acknowledges that women will be exploited like all other workers and so on. But he also says like, look, this is actually an opportunity for women to get organized collectively and to to build movements fighting oppression. And actually look what happened, you know, we're we're now on the third wave of global uh, feminist movement. But on the other hand, he points to capitalism will still also use women to do all of the domestic labor, to do what is today called social reproduction. So the reproduction of the labor force, but everything that comes with it, the the care work for the elderly, for young people, for the sick, and so on and so forth. And it's that contradiction that inevitably is gonna force women to come to the fore in struggles and to become the most radicalized sections of the working class. And I think we really see that playing out today.